Prashant, I think you've brought up a number of things that I'm very curious about. And I think the biggest one is obviously an area that we have in common, which is, I think, entrepreneurship and supporting startups. What, from your point of view, would somebody with a promising solution have to keep in mind beyond the science if they were to have the kind of success, if they, they, they aspire for the kind of success that Cure has had in, I think, the adoption of, its, of their solutions? And where do they, where is the support lacking in the system today for them to get? I think the biggest, you know, support, lack of support, I feel is that Cure, I mean, has competitors. I mean, so we do uh, TB, COVID, some of these conditions, which are some of these diseases, which are mostly low and middle income countries, right? But we'd also do stroke, trauma, heart failure, lung cancer, which are global problems, even developing economies. And we provide radiology support, so which is again a global problem. And so for those conditions, I mean, our competitors typically are Israeli companies or South Korean companies um, or countries from the developed uh, economy, right? And what we have seen is typically a lot of those countries get enormous support from their governments, you know, enormous support from their governments. I mean, the governments fund them, they promote them, and they get funded to deploy in various parts of the world. Um, and that is something which I think is missing in India that we don't get that support from our government. I mean, while we are doing great work trying to sell globally, I mean, we had this funding grant opportunity where we were bidding for a grant and uh, it was between us and another country, uh, one other country, and it was jointly funded by our government and the other government. And, you know, out of all the people that were applying for that, I think we were the only one which was building in India and providing support to the other country and all the other potential grantees were that i mean from that country product products from that country or companies from that country providing uh, services to india and um, i said in that call that i mean i think we should look at us because they said okay you're not bringing any benefit to india why should we support you and i was like we have to promote our products to go abroad if you don't promote then we'll only be focused on india right of course there are lots of problems in india but we have to promote our companies and i think that's one thing which um, Maybe slightly lacking in India, but again, if you, I mean, if you look at US and UK and all that, some of the more developed economies, they also don't do much. I mean, they're also very sort of uh, democratic in that they provide support to all, all kinds of companies. But um, I think some, some of the other competitors that we have seen, they definitely have uh, support from uh, the governments in their countries. And I think that is something that we could do in India to help promote um, our, our uh, companies to, especially, I think we are doing that a lot towards bringing products for the Indian market, but how do we support companies to even expand globally? How do we support them to go to a certain country? And is there some kind of, um, uh, uh, is there some kind of a, a financial benefit that you can provide to go operate in a certain country? So that, that sort of building from India for the world is something that we have not incentivized uh, too much. Yet, you know? So, you know, it's interesting because there are a lot of incentives for, I think, manufacturing to go global. What you're suggesting is that there is an opportunity to apply the same kind of incentive structure or technology in healthcare to also go, go global from India. Actually, that's a very, very good point. I was not thinking about it that way, but that's exactly, yeah. So I think uh, we think about it from, that from a manufacturing standpoint that you want to get manufacturing to India and then we want to uh, obviously provide that to the world, but we can do that with high-tech technology also, not just limited to manufacturing. So I think that's- Prashant, the other thing, and you mentioned this earlier, obviously, Critical to AI is data access. The quality of the solution is only as good as the data. Any thoughts on that? Where, how, where, where do you see the challenges and opportunities both in India and other parts of the world? So data is uh, something where we are very lucky to be in India because everything, I mean, we have uh, it's a huge population. And uh, if you look at even the average hospital, my brother used to be a doctor at CMC Velour, and then he went to Singapore. Uh, he's working in Singapore now for the last 10 years. And uh, CMC Velour being one of the best hospitals in the country, right? And I mean, he was a junior doctor there, but he used to see so many patients with so many different kinds of disease areas, disease conditions. And in Singapore, I mean, obviously you're not seeing that, right? So I think that variety from, a, I mean, which is not good, of course, but that variety that you see and the data that you have in a Indian hospital system, number of patients that you see in Indian hospital ecosystem is way higher than uh, a lot of other countries. And so that is something which is good for us. I mean, I think for us, I mean, what we found is that when we started Cure, data is, I mean, for AI, data is key. I mean, without data, you cannot build AI. I mean, people claim to build AI without data, but you have to have a lot of data to build good models. 
and we were fortunate because we could um, create partnerships with a lot of indian organizations who had a lot of data they could support us with a lot of data and we could train on for example our chest x-ray product is trained on about 4 million scans now and if you look at global competition they are trained on much much maybe about 10x uh, even not even 10x maybe like 100x lower sometimes right so it's a very um, uh, it's very tough to build a good solution with that kind of uh, data and um, we we were actually very fortunate to start this out of india where we had access to that kind of data so that's that's a huge advantage that india has and something that we should leverage especially for ai products and not only in um, not only in healthcare but in everything else i mean if you look at uh, customer buying patterns or um, everything i mean i used to run a company which was in advertising technology before this and um, even if you look at the amount of data that we had from uh, what customers are buying what customers are looking at that data is far richer i mean we have got lot more uh, volumes of data than uh, some of the more uh, global organizations so i think that's a that's an opportunity that we should leverage and uh, creating policies around how data can be used who is using the data how do we actually uh, build something around the data is something that we need to work a lot more on i think the data laws are still sort of a uh, little bit archaic compared to like a gdpr that is there in the uk and that is there in europe um and some of the other data laws in other countries we need to figure out how to make those uh, more robust and do you find that that also affects competitiveness in some way or the other i think um competitiveness is important i, I think if you are if competitiveness is um, something that uh, is affected by data um, question is how do you who has access to data that is the question right if you um, have uh, if everybody has access to the same data then uh it becomes a commodity if you have access to the data then it becomes a differentiator so definitely i mean i think data is a has been a differentiator for us for a long time um but yeah i mean we also understand that over time other people will also get uh data and they will also train good models and they will have good solutions so uh the i mean i think from a as an entrepreneur what i have realized is that you have to keep on evolving your product and your differentiator uh vis-a-vis -vis competition has to keep on changing i mean in the first couple of years it was maybe data that we had in next couple of years it was a research and publication then it has to be regulatory clearances then it has to be actually the engineering and the access and the go to market so i think it will keep on evolving and uh, over time uh, we will see i mean where where that ends up in the next several years but data is definitely a competitive advantage and we should i mean for india indian companies that is definitely there so prashant you bring me back to i think the first question you asked which is the difference between the pharma industry and india health fund and i'd like to ask you the same thing given i think the nature of the work that cure ai does and i think the segments that you operate in which is very much driven by public health systems in many cases whether it's tuberculosis and now covid how do you balance out profit versus public good that's a that's a great question i don't think i have the answer to that mother i think it's a very very tough question but um what i feel is that both have to be there together because if you if you only rely on public good public money to be spent in a way where uh somebody is not profiting off of that um and then i mean you uh, you are not promoting innovation right in some ways you're saying that okay there is all this money that we have as a government or uh, as a public health organization globally right and we are going to give it to uh, people who are only going to uh, be non profits which is typically how it operates you're not really promoting innovation right and i think that's one of the models that potentially i feel can change because um the reality is that people who are i mean capitalistic in nature companies are capitalistic right and they are far are more far more incentivized to innovate than a non profit organization and i think we have to figure out how to find the balance between non profit and profit and i think what we have seen at cure is that we have never said that okay i mean we are purely a, a philanthropic organization or we'll build something which is uh, going to be provided for free to our customers we have never had that approach but we said okay we are going to solve big problems we are going to solve tb we are going to try to solve covid lung cancer stroke trauma and we have gone about in a i would say in a capitalistic way building solutions which are being commercialized and being paid for by customers but the value is created and finally point is that we are making the ecosystem better we are making that ecosystem which was operating on subpar solutions better by providing a better quality solution and that is where i think the private companies like cure and a lot of other uh, companies that you are funding at ihf and maybe others that are out there right they they can come and add to this to see how we could work between the public sector organizations and the non profit organizations and bring 
private sector in to innovate and to move quickly because i think that's something which we have an advantage on i mean we can move much faster um, and especially as not only as a uh, private sector organization also as a startup right we can move way way faster than most big companies can most um, ngos can and that is something where we can bring in that advantage and we can get stuff done much faster so i don't think there is i don't know if there is a clear answer to the public good versus profit um, question i think there has to be a happy medium somewhere and uh, we have to figure that out but um, the point is that if uh, if innovation has to be there then companies have to be incentivized um, people have to be incentivized to um, innovate and that incentive structure if it's lacking then we don't see good innovation happening and that obviously has an implication on the kind of capital that's available innovation yeah so that's again another point right if you look at capital again there are two types of capital that are available to uh, a company like your right there is the venture capital and private equity money which is capital to build the solutions and to grow it which is obviously uh, predicated on commercial success of the company and there is company there are there is capital which is coming from uh, non profit organizations which can help build our solution now the goals of both are, are very different right one is towards impact one is towards um, uh, capitalism one is towards um, growing commercially so um, i think it's it's a interesting and i mean till now i think if you look at how we have typically done this most of our capital has come from i mean i think uh, venture capital and that's sort of how we have grown till now but i can also imagine building a company in this space where um, you're not taking venture capital money and you're basically getting funded by a, a non profit or somebody who's doing that and i don't know if that is the case and um, if it's not a non it's, if it's a non commercial organization i don't know how that would play out and it might be a little bit different in fact that's exactly the relationship that we are now building between curi and india health fund which has a not for profit is i think supporting the, cap- the needs you have to develop the solution but we're also working very closely to facilitate its adoption and i think what we did with the municipal corporation in bombay last year was a very good example of a public body adopting an ai driven solution to i think bridge the gap that you mentioned in the lack in the limitation in the number of radiologists available to scan chest x rays to do a quick triaging of covid patients and the success rate was over 98% of asymptomatics being picked up which i think manual screening was unable to pick and then when they ran it the, when they used it to the covid care centers for patient monitoring it suddenly freed up a lot of the doctors times from routine monitoring because the algorithm took it over and i think that is a great example of how that happy medium as you mentioned it can be created i think that's absolutely true absolutely true the public authorities could see the difference that the solution was making so they were open to adopting it i mean the cure team obviously did an incredible job of i think facilitate and india health fund sort of not just supported the development but also facilitate and uh, worked with a number of other partners who provided the resources to enable the whole thing and that's now i think becoming a virtuous cycle which we're now working together on wider scale up in more far flung geographies more limited areas so as you say it's a journey but it's a journey that i'm very excited about working together on with the cure team because it's addressing a need that exists both in the public and private health sectors and hopefully i think bringing really cutting edge technology to the people who need it the most and making sure that it's sustainable let me ask you the same question back right what do you how do you think i mean these private and how do you promote innovation right i think we started with that question about promoting the vaccines and promoting innovation in this space in the public health space for tb and hiv and malaria how do we promote innovation how do we bring the private companies private startups to also build solutions in this area and how do you sort of bring in public money towards doing that right and ihf is doing a great job of that right but how do you encourage that i mean at a global level to scale that up and prashant i think there are a couple of building blocks towards that one is of course having a solution that can significantly improve outcomes visibly what's available and we have a very tough focus on if anything that comes to us does not provide a significant improvement over what's available we do encourage i think a review and we provide the technical support to help improve that. the second thing is building the financial case how do those improved outcomes result in better patient outcomes not just patient outcomes but i think overall health economy because sometimes you will see that a slightly higher cost of a test or a device can actually result in lower costs for the overall healthcare system in general with better outcomes so it also allows for better resource utilization without necessarily um spending more money but i think those are the two big buckets and this is something that i think 
most public health systems are increasingly aware, very open to. And I have to say, um, I think certainly governments as well as the private sector are now increasingly understanding the need for this, not just for com non-communicable diseases that they always have, but now for communicable diseases as well, because they're looking for, I think, the next best thing, which can help improve what is ha already happening on the ground, particularly for communicable diseases. And that's where our sweet spot is. Got it. Got it. Do you uh, anticipate uh, moving on into non-communicable diseases at some point, or this is communicable diseases is going to be your focus for next several years so like i said what we are doing is really supporting the development of technologies which can be applied across several diseases so in many cases the technologies we are supporting already are applicable to between communicable and non-communicable diseases cure being a great case in point where i think what we started with tb has now also been applied very successfully for lung cancer so as these solutions evolve and as these solutions emerge, we will continue to facilitate them because we're very keen on supporting technology-driven platforms, which can be applied across several diseases, which I think help us fulfill our goal of impact, but also ensure that we're very capital efficient in doing it. We can obviously address, we can also we can impact a larger number of lives. As an organization, we are very focused at the moment on, I think, helping meet both the national as well as international goals of elimination of communicable diseases by 2030. And in the case of India, 2025 and 2027. Beyond that, if all goes well, once these are uh, eliminated, there, will there be other communicable diseases to deal with? I'm sure there will. Will non-communicable diseases go away? Sadly not. So I think it's going to be a journey that we will take. We're already, I think, at the very early stages of at least ensuring the crossover from communicable to non-communicable diseases. And I think that will continue over time. Um, and I mean, what is what would be your advice to entrepreneurs who are starting out um, in this area? I mean, in general, if you uh, were to advise an entrepreneur starting out in healthcare, what uh, would be advice in terms of maybe talking about what areas they should focus on, uh, what geographies they should focus on, and uh, so maybe just uh, and maybe in general, Gyan also on how how entrepreneurs should uh, build a company in this space. You have seen so many entrepreneurs working on in the public health space, right? So maybe you can advise for give advice to some of the other entrepreneurs who are coming up. So I think the first piece of possibly the only piece of advice I would give is look beyond the science see how the science is applicable to the market. And I think that's very often where great solutions don't really see the light of day because they haven't necessarily adapted to the needs of the market, whether it's the public, market, public health system or the private health system. And there is very often an adaptation that's needed because that's where scalability eventually happens. Mm -hmm. That would be the first thing. The second thing would be, and this is something we spoke about earlier, think global always, because the world needs these solutions. And I think thinking global allows for, I think, a certain approach, which you've, I think, articulated so eloquently in terms of understanding the regulatory requirements, the geographical requirements, and the other, obviously, the capital requirements. And I think the third thing would be, engage early with a number of stakeholders, which would involve not just, I think, the regulators, but also the possibly the distribution and channel partners, the hospitals and the health systems that would be the end users to make sure that the design requirements are taken into account early rather than uh, at a later stage when possibly a solution is well-developed. So I think those would be the three things I would say. There's no magic bullet, as you know. <laughs> and um, any, any last words for um, your, I mean, from an IHF perspective on our partnership and anything uh, we could be doing together? So look, I think the IHF Cure AI partnership has been an incredibly fruitful one and a very fulfilling one, certainly from for both partners. I think there is a lot that we can do together. Because if you think about it, we're at the very beginning of a journey. And we've built a solution together. 
we have started developing the stakeholder relationships to, I think, demonstrate the ability of this solution to have an impact. Now, whether it's been in a city or now increasingly in certain states in the country. That's all been done with catalytic funding. I think the opportunity we now have is to collaborate on demonstrating both the impact at a patient level, as well as I think at a resource level, the deployment of the solution can have on a larger scale with the intention of, I think, almost evangelizing adoption across the world and also facilitating, I think, the resources that are needed to support both the adoption as well as the further development of this, because I mean, technology runs on a very quick turnaround cycle and the development cycle. So I think there is the op opportunity to also continuously evolve. And I think that those would be, I think very fertile areas for India Health Fund and Curia to continue collaborating as also to see how um, AI driven solutions in general can be facilitated by, certainly by India Health Fund and possibly many of our other partners and collaborators so that we can create a whole ecosystem of technology improving outcomes in healthcare. Thank you, thank you, Madhav. That was uh, very enlightening. And uh, I, we, we really appreciate the partnership with IHF from uh, the uh, ability to for us to expand our solution portfolio to expand beyond just digital X-rays to analog X-rays as well, but also the ecosystem support that you have provided from Connex to BMC to uh, other other customers across the country and that facilitation of uh, that expansion adoption uh, those are all things that are uh, hard and I think uh, as you said I mean we are in the early stages of this partnership and uh, gradually expanding uh, the outreach and gradually expanding how we uh, deploy at more places and create finally the goal is to create more impact together so Looking forward to uh, a very strong partnership and continuing to uh, strengthen our relationship going forward. And uh, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, it was an honor chatting with you. And uh, thanks for all your advice and guidance uh, over the years and um, uh, today as well. And look forward to being in touch. Uh, Likewise, Prashant. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. And it's been a great partnership. Look forward to continuing to build and strengthen it. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thanks Mark. very much.